Psalms 111. The Bible says, Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. A lot of you just did that. A lot of you are guilty of what verse number 1 says. You praise the Lord. What a blessing. Every testimony was a blessing. I didn't hear anybody talk about themselves. I didn't hear anybody give any glory to man. But I heard a whole lot of folks praising the Lord. And can I say, it is a privilege to be able to praise Him. It's a blessing to know Him so you can praise Him. And can I say, uh, 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 when you do praise Him, He inhabits that. Uh, and He takes up His abode. He appreciates being bragged on. Notice verse 2. The works of the Lord are great. Sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Thank the Lord for that. I'm glad he's gracious. I'm glad he's full of compassion. I'm glad he don't give us what we deserve. He gives us what we need. Uh, we find that he goes on to say this in verse number 5. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. Mm, Brother Brian, that's what you was bragging on. You love the Lord, you fear him, you rever reverentially trust him, and he just blesses you. He gives you the meat of what you need in your life. That's what God does. Uh, I promise you this, if you'll be a Bible Christian, uh, you'll find God's much bigger than you could ever imagine. Uh, but notice he also says this, uh, he will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has showed his people the power of his works, that he uh, may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. You can take them to the bank. It's impossible for God to lie. And uh, if God has promised it or if God's commanded it, uh, uh, there is nothing that will move it or shake it off its foundation. Uh, Verse number 8, they stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Uh, I'm glad we're saved. Uh, I'm glad we're just not a congregation coming out to go through a ritual. Uh, I'm glad I've been redeemed. Uh, and I'm glad he sent it because uh, we couldn't earn it. Uh, notice he also says uh, 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 that he hath commanded his covenant forever. Here it is, holy and reverend uh, is his name. Uh, what ought to cause us to praise him, what ought to cause us uh, uh, to worship him, uh, is to realize uh, holy and reverend is his name. Uh, we're not worthy uh, of him to look our way, Brother Ray, uh, but he looked our way. Uh, he who is holy, uh, he who is most reverend, uh, uh, we ought to worship him for his goodness and his mercy towards us. Uh, by the way, that's the only place in the Bible you find the word reverend. And it's not referring to a man. Mm, that'll help some of you. Mm. And then it goes on to say this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Do you realize what you did tonight praising the Lord will last forever? Do you realize he recorded that in glory? Do you realize that God will never forget you bringing glory to his name? Hmm? Boy, you get to thinking like that and you realize there's a whole lot more to come to church than sitting down being bored. Hmm? Huh? I had never got, I, I've never gotten to understand that. Well, church is born. Well, you don't know the Lord I know. And you don't go to the church I go to. Huh? But I, in this... Uh, a, a wonderful chapter. It can be broken down in three sections. We find in verse number one the worship of the Lord. Uh, can I say when we worship God, uh, 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 He truly is glorified. Can I say we're all uh, guilty of not worshiping Him more. But we find the worship of God. Can I say uh, in verses two through eight we find the works of God. 
we find some great things that he has done. And then we find in verse 9 and 10 the worthiness of God. He's holy and reverend. Mm, can I say the beginning of wisdom is uh, uh, fearing him. Uh, and uh, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise continueth forever. So we see these things. And really I'd like to preach on this thought for a little while tonight. I'd like to preach on what God has done. What God has done. Has he ever done anything for you? You ought to put up both hands, both feet. I mean, he's letting you breathe his air. He's letting you walk on his footstool. Uh, he's causing your heart to beat, the blood to flow through your body. Uh, he put strength in your body uh, uh, to be able to get out of bed today. Uh, he's blessed you with a good house. He's blessed you with a good car. He's blessed you uh, 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 with a little money in your pocket. Uh, he's blessed you with a good job, food in your table. Uh, he's blessed you with everything you have. Uh, but can I say all that is just sinking sand. Uh, what God has really done as he sent his son to die on Calvary uh, that he might save your never dying soul uh, and if you're saved today you've been made a joint heir to the throne of Christ uh, you've been adopted into the family of God uh, friend you're going to live forever uh, as brother Jeffrey said on uh, a sunny night he's going to prepare you a mansion uh, hey God's been good to you my dear friends uh, so I want to preach on what God has done but I say, first of all, God, uh, He formed everything in creation. There's nothing that there is that God didn't form it or allow it to be made. Even uh, if God's against it, He still gave man the wisdom to be able to accomplish something. There's nothing seen or unseen that could have been done without God. Can I say he not only formed everything in creation, can I say he forgives because of Calvary? Amen. Uh, talk about what God's done. He forgives. I'm glad he's not like man. Right. Man will say they forgive, but they don't forgive. And then man won't forget it. I'm glad when God forgives it, when He applies His blood to it, uh, I'm glad it, it's gone. Uh, the stain is gone. Uh, the memory of it is gone. Uh, I'm glad uh, He forgives because of Calvary. Uh, hey, His forgiveness came at a price. Uh, His darling son uh, carried the cross down the Via Della Rosa some two miles uh, and so laid it down on Golgotha's hill. Uh, then He laid down on the cross, uh, was nailed. Uh, it was suspended between heaven and earth uh, and he emptied himself of his life's blood uh, to be able to forgive you and I of our sin uh, we find uh, can I say he formed everything in creation mm, can I say he forgives because of Calvary mm, can I say I'm talking about what God's done he's been faithful throughout the centuries God has never been unfaithful He's never been late. He's never, ever not been exactly what he's supposed to be, God. Mm, Brother Brian said in his testimony, sometimes we get a little impatient, but I'm glad God's faithful. Mm, he's always faithful. And if he promised it, he'll do it. Mm, I'm glad for those things. Mm, looking at what God has done, this chapter does a wonderful job outlining the works of God. And so I want to look at these works of God in this chapter tonight so we can have a greater appreciation of what God's done. Every testimony tonight was alluding to the message. Everything that was sang alluded to the message. Everything that has transpired in the service thus far was being played out in Psalms 111. In noticing the works of God, I want you to notice first of all that the works of God are royal. Look in verse number 3. The Bible says His work is honorable. Can I say that word honorable is important? Verse number 2 says the works of the Lord are great. His works are royal. They're great. There can nothing but greatness be aspired to them. 
Can I say tonight, uh, when you said, I want to thank God for saving my soul, uh, you were testifying to the greatness of God. It took a thrice holy God uh, to reach down from heaven uh, down to the pit of sin where you was uh, and reach down there and get in the pit with you uh, and elevate you out of the pit uh, and redeem your never dying soul. Uh, that was the greatness of God. Uh, only God could have done that. Uh, a man couldn't save your soul. Uh, man might be able to help save your life. Uh, Man might be able to help save your home. Uh, man might be able to help save you, uh, 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 save you from debt. Uh, but I want to tell you, only God can save your soul. Uh, and that testifies to His greatness. Uh, that is a royal attribute of God that nobody else can take credit for. Can I say, His works are royal. Can I say, His works are respectful. Verse 2 again. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. If you've tasted the good grace of God, you seek out the things of God. And you can testify of the greatness of God. In verse 3 again, His work is honorable. Honorable. Respectful. Can I say that you can never say God's ever been anything less than honorable. Can I say, His works are respectful. Nobody can look at the works of God and say, Oh, anybody can do that. Everybody has to take respect of the things of God. Do you realize artists for all of mankind has tried to paint sunsets and tried to paint mountain scenes and take pictures of mountain scenes and of brooks uh, 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 strolling through the mountains. Uh, take pictures uh, of the beautiful uh, uh, fields uh, uh, with uh, uh, grain uh, uh, waving in the wind. Uh, take pictures uh, of children. Take pictures. Uh, and they're, what they're doing is they're uh, showing forth the beauty of the handiwork of God. Uh, uh, they're showing respect to God by saying, uh, look how beautiful this is. Uh, can I help you something? Only God can do those things. Uh, mm, it's respectful, His works are. Mm, mm. You look at a baby, how precious. When people hold up a child and say, oh, this baby's an angel, you know what they're really saying? They're giving respect to God because God formed that baby in the womb. Mm. His works are royal. They're great. His works are respectful. They're honorable. But as I say this, His works are remarkable. Look again in verse number 3. His work is honorable and glorious, and His righteousness endures forever. That word glorious just simply means remarkable. There isn't anything else like it. It's glorious. It's rapturous. It's remarkable. It's something that's hard to put into words. Uh, it's so bright and so beautiful and so just wonderful that we have to say that's remarkable. We cannot grasp all that is therein. When we talk about going home and seeing the Lord in His glory, we can't fathom that. You say, preacher, what is it going to be like? I say, it's going to be remarkable. It's going to be so far out there that we need to have a glorified body to take it in. Hmm? Remarkable. You know, a lot of folks will say, well, that's superior. And we, we attach titles to things today as being great. And a few years ago, it was just average. Can I say, for all the intellect and all that man has become, we're getting dumber and dumber by the day. Hmm? Uh, we can't even have little kids win anymore. They've got to have a tie. Hmm? Uh, because we're so soft that nobody can take being a loser. We'll come to our children's events and you'll find out how big a loser you really are because our kids will kill you. Huh? Because we win around here. Hmm? But can I say the things of God are so remarkable that some of them are, you can't even put into words. Brother Brian, when you try to witness them lost co-workers and stuff and they just don't get it, it's because God's so remarkable until He reveals Himself, you won't get it either. Mm. Uh, sometimes all you can say is, you had to be there. Mm. Uh, 
Uh, listen, uh, many years ago, Christian was a baby. He was four weeks old. We got to go to Hawaii. And we got to see uh, the big island. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But when we went to the little island of Kauai, which is known as the Garden Island, some of the most beautiful things in all Hawaii are there. And I could begin to describe them to you, but it ain't going to mean anything to you because you haven't seen it. Huh? They have what they call the Grand Canyon of the Pacific. We had to go up 11 miles up a goat path to get up there. And you look down in it, and you would not believe all the colors of all the vegetation. It looked like a rainbow. It's unbelievable. But see, you can't understand that because you haven't seen it. But I've seen it. Are you listening? Uh, we can talk about other things. We can talk about food. Anybody not have dinner tonight? We can talk about food. Miss a Netflix steak tonight. Uh, and she puts this season. I don't know what it is, but she puts this seasoning on it. And I cut into that thing. I put that thing in my mouth. It was like cotton candy just melted in my mouth. It was wonderful. But, brother, you can't get it because you didn't eat it. But I, no, I didn't. I want to tell you that hunk of meat, I'm not kidding you, it was that big. I am not lying. It was that big. I cut her off a section. I cut me off a section. And even he couldn't finish the rest of it. Are you listening? It was a big hunk of meat. But that doesn't mean anything to you. Huh? Because you didn't experience it. Isn't it wonderful when you taste of the Lord? No wonder the psalmist said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, once you taste, then you can see. Huh? We once were blind, but now we see. But when you've tasted of His goodness, uh, you begin to see through the eye of faith things of God that you never ever saw. Hey, God's been around ever ever since you've been around. Uh, he's been around you every day. Uh, but you didn't see Him, uh, even though He was there. But once you tasted of Him, uh, you start bumping into Him everywhere. Uh, you start seeing Him everywhere. Uh, the birds are singing. You hear His voice. Uh, uh, the dogs are howling. You hear the goodness of God. Hey, I'm just talking about God. God's always been there. He's just remarkable. You'll never know to you. Trust in Him. Can I say His works are remarkable? They're respectful. They're royal. But can I say this? His works are riveting. That's, that's a fancy word. They just make you sit on the edge of your seat. Huh? Look at verse number 4. What it says? He hath made His wonderful works. That word wonderful there simply means riveting. Huh? I like it when he's so good and so close, I'm on the edge of my seat. I like it when you're sitting there thinking, what's next? Hmm? You see, when God gets in the middle of doing something, it's just riveting. Huh? How many of you remember on PBS, kids Google it, Bob Ross, the painter. He's still on. He's been dead 20 years or 30 years. But he's still got the afro. Uh, but there was something mesmerizing about Bob Ross taking a canvas and a paintbrush. he say, oh, I see a tree. I'm looking, I'm saying, I don't see nothing. And he'd be going, mmm, mmm, oh. Step back, and you know what it was? It was a tree. Huh? It was just unbelievable. I said, it was riveting. I was waiting to see the tree. Huh? James shaking his head, no. Never seen Bob Ross. The altar is open. Huh? I haven't seen not long ago, I don't know, I don't know where it was, but they actually had like a DVD collection of all the Bob Ross paintings. He was just a regular guy with an afro and a goatee. Donald Trump with an afro, that's him. And he'd have the palette with his thumb going through it, and he'd tell you which brush to go. And he'd, sometimes he'd pick up that little trial thing, and he'd just etch something there, and he'd just go to it. And, and in 30 minutes, he would paint the most beautiful picture. And if you're watching that, it's riveting, because you're seeing art unfold. Can I say? A lot of times you're out there, you don't get to see it. But I get to be up here, and I get to see him doing something in the surface. And it's riveting. 
seen him deal in hearts. Over the weekend, it was riveting looking at these children, watching God deal with them, uh, and seeing them so excited, and seeing them uh, uh, just be a part of the service. Uh, it's riveting seeing. And honey, we just got a taste of it. Uh, hang around till Jesus comes. Uh, we don't know. Maybe some of these young people, uh, some of these young boys will grow up and surrender to preach. Uh, maybe some of these young girls uh, will start singing specials. Uh, uh, who knows how God's going to use them. Uh, but it's riveting knowing that God's are doing the work. Uh, can I say this? God's works rule. Look at in verse number 6. He hath showed his people the power of his works. See, God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. His power rules. And the power of his works shows that he rules. Can I say, it don't matter what, what legislation is passed that goes against the Bible. God rules. Hmm? His works, and the power behind his works, rule. Huh? It don't matter what uh, 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 the modern churches come up with as the next big movement or the next big slight that goes against preaching. It doesn't matter. God shows through the foolishness of preaching uh, that souls would be saved. Uh, and preaching, uh, when it is powered by God, uh, it rules, my dear friends. You can't put any price on what God does. And the power behind what He does rules. Amen. You know you are here by the power of God. Amen. Do you realize that through Him and by Him does everything consist? Amen. Do you realize that means He keeps everything in order? Mm, science will tell you gravity does it. Well, who keeps gravity? Jesus Christ. Science will tell you the sun's what gives us light. Well, who gives the sun light? Jesus Christ. See, He rules. And He reigns. And He's all-powerful. I thought about this. Right here in this chapter, can I say that the works of God are reality? Look at verse 7. The works of His hands are verity. That word verity means a reality. Absolute truth. I heard a guy the other day tell a guy that uh, the King James Bible is the most recognizable one, but the easiest to understand is the NIV. Well, that's talking out of both sides of your mouth. He also made this statement that the Bible is the Word of God. Well, which one? They all can't be the Word of God because they're all different. Some of them don't even have all the verses. The NIV takes out the blood of Christ 171 times. I don't need that one. I need all the blood of Christ I can get. Can I say the works of God are a reality and absolute truth? Hmm. Now you can try and say that you're not here, but the reality of the matter is you're here. And you can argue and argue and argue like the Democrats against the facts, but you can't change the facts. They're still true. Hmm. Because the works of God are verity. They're reality and their absolute truth. Now you can try every which way in the world to get Adam and Steve together to have a baby, but it ain't happening. Because God made Adam and Eve and ordained the man and the woman, and only through them can a child come forth. Hmm? Now you can try and change that all you want to. It don't change the fact. And can I say, you can say that what's in that womb is not a child and you have the right to abort it. Uh, well, if it's not real, then why are you aborting it? Hmm? 
See, your perception of reality doesn't make it reality. And your interpretation of truth don't make it true. But the works of God are verity, reality, and absolute truth. Can I say something else about the works of God? They're reasonable. Look again at verse number 7. The works of His hands are verity and judgment. Now this is not hellfire brimstone judgment that it's talking about. It's talking about His works are reasonable. The judgment behind His works are reasonable. God knows what He's doing. And He does everything within reason. That's why your nose is not in your armpit. Wouldn't that be a mess? But God in His works is reasonable. He knew where your nose needed to be. So in His reasoning, He put his nose, your nose where it's supposed to be. But can I say, in His reasoning, that's why He doesn't show up at every whimper you got. That's why when Lazarus died, he waited four days so he could show how great a God he really is. His reasoning or his ways are far above our ways. But his works are reasonable. He has well thought them out. And he just doesn't react or do something to do it. But he always has an intent and a purpose behind his works. Let me say this. The works of God are to be remembered. Look in verse number 4 again. He hath made His wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. We are to remember everything that God does. You know why testimonies are good? People are testifying of what God's done in their lives and it reminds those in their audience to be reminded of what God's done in their own life. But when we remember what God has done, it always comes back to point us to the fact that God is full of compassion and full of mercy. Because in all the greatness and all the vastness of God, who are we? that He would even consider us. It shows us how wonderful His works truly are. Now tonight, all the testimonies, all the singing led to this message. I'm sitting up here thinking, y'all keep testifying, you're going to preach my message, I'm just going to close her up. <laughs> but tonight, I just want you to consider all that God has done. Amen. Consider what He did this weekend. Consider what he did last week. Consider what he's able to do in the days to come. Amen. And certainly consider what he did the night you got born again. Amen. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you really took time to consider him? The writer of Hebrews said, consider him. Hmm? Brother Ray, remember I preached on that and ran outside the old building out there? Y'all thought I was going to be out there forever. Remember that? That's before we had the mic. Yeah, I was out there just preaching, having the time out there. Y'all thinking, is he coming back? <laughs> when I came back, that same door I left, Sherman, Brother Sherman said, you knew it was of God because that door, we didn't unlock it back then. And he said, if, I, if it wouldn't have been of God, he wouldn't have been able to get back in. So what was you doing? I don't know. God got too big of my soul for that little sanctuary we had over there. Well, when you really start considering Him, He'll get too big for you too. The indictment of us is we get over Him all too soon. So remember Him. Remember His works. And remember what He has done. And the beauty of Him is He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He told Moses, I am that I am. You know what that means? He's always in the present. So if he did it six years ago, he's still in the present with him. He can do it right now, tonight. Yep. But we must consider great works of God. This psalm starts and ends with praising the Lord. God help us to truly praise Him, not only with our lips, but our lives, that others can see the great work He's done in us. Sure. And it creates a, an appetite or a hunger 
that he'll do something in their life. For he said, seek and ye shall find. God help us to remember the works of God. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song. Maybe tonight you want to come and thank him for how good he's been to you. Maybe tonight you want to come and ask him for some help. Some areas in your life you need some help. He's a present help in time of trouble. The psalmist said, I'll look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Maybe tonight you're here and you've never been saved, but the Lord sure has been working on your heart. Why don't you come tonight and trust Jesus as Lord and Savior. You'll see he's full of compassion and he's full of mercy. Folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the good testimonies leading up to the preaching. Lord, I'm glad when you work us straight and put things in order. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless now this invitation. Maybe some need to come and thank you for all the good things you've done in their life. Maybe tonight somebody here is lost. God, I pray you'd convict them. I pray you'd roll the veil off and the scales off from their eyes to see their eternity without you but to see that you're full of compassion, that you'll save them. Maybe somebody here tonight is real low. And Lord, they've forgotten the good works of God. Maybe somebody just needs to be good and go by their way and tell them they appreciate them. And cause their eyes to see how good God's been. Maybe somebody here, just somebody's been a blessing to them. They just want to go tell them, well, God, whatever you desire in this invitation, we know the works of God are wonderful. I have your way in this invitation. Do a tremendous work in our midst. And God will thank you for what you do. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today. Where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.